record. Uh, welcome to this second day of workshop. Uh, today, we're gonna start with the presentation of Dr. Arno Chapui. He's a senior researcher in Sirat, France, but now he's working in Senegal. Uh, the, this part, the topic, the name of this part is lesson, Lessons Learned, RTB findings on the key components for efficient flash dryer system. Please, Dr. Arno. Thank you, Alejandro. I'm gonna share my screen. Um, yes. So can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, great. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I'm, doing, uh, I'm going to present the uh, main lessons we have learned from uh, all the work we've been doing the past few years on uh, the development of flash dryers. Um, so I will try to give an overview of the, of the key components for flash drying efficiency. Uh, and I will also briefly present some of the design tools we have put on the website. Uh, so uh, here is a brief reminder of the, of the history, but uh, Thierry and Abbas uh, already presented uh, that in more detail yesterday. But just to remind it, uh, the initial observation were that uh, there is a high demand for cost-efficient solutions to dry cassava flour and starch at small scale. Uh, worldwide, especially in Africa. And uh, another observation was that uh, at the time, uh, small capacity flash dryers uh, consumed a lot of energy while uh, on industrial scale, this technology was uh, highly efficient. So uh, to understand the reason of, of this uh, difference of energy efficiency, um, we started first by developing a numerical model to simulate the flash drying operation and then understand how uh, to optimize the design of flash dryers. Um, then uh, we used uh, this model. So the model was first developed uh, based on data from in industrial scale dryers. And uh, then we decided to develop a small scale dryer, so a pilot flash dryer that was built at SIAT in Colombia. Um, and uh, so that, that dryer was started up in, uh, in 2018. And, um, and, and from then uh, we have been tested it extensively and uh, we also initiated some work on uh, dewatering because you will see in this presentation that it is also a very important operation. Uh, so uh, an overview of, uh, flash, of a flash drying system that most of you know. Uh, so a flash drying system is composed mainly here of a drying pipe. You have an air heating system or air heater that is producing hot air. The hot air is sent through the drying pipe. At the beginning of the drying pipe, there is a, a feeding system allowing to pulverize the product into, into the pipe. Uh, the powder product is uh, conveyed by the hot air. And at the end of the drying pipe, it is separated by, by a, a cyclone. Um, so, uh, before starting on specific components of the, of the flash drying system, um, I would like to present some key elements that uh, determines the energy requirements for drying, because uh, energy consumption in drying is, is uh, determined by physical constraint. So there is always a, a physical minimum energy consumption. For example, if you want to dry uh, to get one ton of uh, dried cassava product at 12% moisture content, you will need to start with uh, wet cassava. Uh, let's say it is at 45% moisture content, then you will need 1.6 ton of cassava at that moisture content. And to dry this, you will use hot air. Uh, the thing is that hot air can take up 
uh, a limited quantity of uh, water bef uh, before it gets saturated. So for example, if you work with hot air at 200 degrees, uh, at maximum, uh, the air will take up, if you take six, uh, 10 tons of air, the air can take up uh, 600 kilos of uh, water and then it will be saturated you will start having uh, fog so droplets so this is the minimum uh, quantity of hot air you need at 200 degrees to get this one ton of dried cassava flour and to produce uh, hot air at 200 degrees from ambient air you will need at least uh, 40 liters of diesel fuel so this is the uh, the minimum energy requirement because this is the uh, this is considering that you have a uh, hundred percent efficiency on the on the air heater and a hundred percent efficiency on the drive so this never happens in practice of course so that's the best you can do in ideal condition and uh, now uh, i will I, I would like to show you what happens if you uh, have a better dewatering and you we assume that you don't start with a, a wet cassava flower at 45 percent moisture content but at 35 percent moisture content the difference will be that to get one ton of cassava flower you will need 1.35 ton of wet cassava flower and it, instead of 10 ton of hot air you will need only 5.8 ton so almost the half of it and the consequence of that is that you need uh, almost only half of the fuel quantity to heat up that hot air so that means that prior to drying uh, uh, dewatering is a very very important operation so we will come back on that uh, a bit later um, so now, the, the efficiency of flash drying depends, depends on several components. Uh, it mostly depends on uh, the dryer and on the heat exchanger. Uh, so you have different uh, sources of heat losses. You will have heat losses at the dryer level because you release moist air uh, at, at a certain temperature. So you start with hot air, at, let's say at 200 degrees and you will release hot air at about 70 degrees for a good dryer or even less. If you release air at too high temperature, of course you are, you are losing energy because there is still energy in the, in the hot air that has not been used to evaporate water from the product. Similarly, on the, on the heat exchanger, what happens is that you are going to produce hot gas with a burner. This is the, the smoke from the, from the burned fuel that is at about, uh, at about 1500 degrees, for example. And at the heat exchanger outlet, you will release exhaust gases at 200 uh, degrees in a good heat exchanger. But uh, if, uh, for example, you are still at 500 degrees, then again, you are losing uh, a lot of energy. And another source of heat losses is uh, the wall losses you can have on this equipment. And uh, to prevent those losses, uh, which are called wall losses, you will need to have a good insulation around uh, the dryer and around the heat exchanger system. So in the design, uh, we always need to consider uh, the whole system to have a, to have a, a good energy efficiency. So um, I said we developed a, um, a drying model. So I, I, I just would like to show you some example of the, of the results we get with this model. So uh, the model allows to simulate the profile, uh, the profile we have inside the drying pipe, along the drying pipe. Okay. It will calculate. Merci à vous aussi à tout à l'heure. I'm hearing you on the, okay. <laughs> uh, so the, the, um, the model will simulate the velocity profile of uh, air and starch, and it will also simulate the moisture profile and the, and the temperature all along the drying pipe. So for example, what you can see here is, uh, is that 
you start here with the with the moisture content of 38 percent and you are going down uh, to uh, 12 percent at the at the drier outlet and you can see that most of the drying takes place uh, in the in the in the first 10 meters of the dryer but uh, the last 15 meters are very important for energy efficiency and in terms of temperature if you start with uh, well any temperature at the dryer outlet if you have a good dryer uh, the, the the starch and the, and the air will have about the same temperature of around something like 50 degrees that's on a very efficient dryer uh, using that model so uh, we have um, done uh, a, a range of uh, a range of trials on the pilot plus dryer we have built at SIA to validate that the model uh, results are correct. Uh, so that's an example of the model prediction in terms of final product moisture and in terms of output air temperature on more than 50 drying trials. And, and we can see that uh, the model uh, gives a quite reliable prediction of uh, the output conditions. So um, now let's talk about uh, the, the design guidelines for uh, uh, a flash drying system. So the first thing is, uh, of course, the dryer uh, dimensions and uh, operating conditions, mostly air velocity. So as Thierry presented yesterday, uh, a major finding of our works is that uh, to be efficient, uh, a flash dryer needs to have a certain length, um, preferably higher than uh, 25 meters, to 30 meters. So that allows to get uh, high efficiency, similar to what is found on uh, industrial scale equipment. Then uh, we recommend to have an air velocity between 10 and 12 meters per second. So that's a good compromise because uh, air velocity have two opposite effects. Uh, it increasing air velocity reduces the, the time the, uh, the product has to dry in the, in the, in the dryer, but it also reduces uh, the particle size, which also improves the drying. So uh, a good compromise is, is 10 to 12 meters per second. And uh, that's the basis for uh, for the design of the of, of the dryer, and then uh, the processing capacity of the dryer is actually uh, proportional to the quantity of air that you will put in it. So, uh, at the same velocity, then you, when you increase the pipe diameter, you will increase uh, the drying capacity. And typically, if you double the diameter, you uh, double the section of the pipe. So you double uh, the quantity. You uh, the quantity of air is multiplied by four, because if you double the diameter, you have a, a section that is four times bigger. Um, okay, so I, I cannot give uh, much more details on the on what diameter is required for uh, what drying capacity, but that can be calculated with the design tools we, provide, we provided on the website. Um, now, uh, again, about the, the dewatering and the fact that uh, you will need far less energy if you start with uh, a product at 35% moisture content instead of 45. So uh, this calculation considers the whole uh, system efficiency with the good heat exchanger and a good uh, flash dryer. So basically, if you uh, there are two effects on that because with the same dryer, so here with a pipe length of 25 meters and a diameter of um, 300 millimeters, if you start with uh, a product at 45% moisture content, your production capacity will be of uh, 125 kilo per hour, and that will cost you 80 liters of fuel per ton of flour. On the other hand, if you start at 35% moisture content, you will be able to produce with the same dryer 260 kilo per hour, so that is more than double, and you will, you will use uh, the half quantity of fuel per ton of flour. So this, uh, this is a very important result, and this is why it is very important to improve pressing and, and dewatering as much as possible. 
so now let's have a quick look at the at the dryer design tool we provide online. So it's an uh, Excel design tool. You will find inside the, the Excel file uh, the instruction of how to use it. But basically, here in red, you will have you have the input data. So you will need to enter the drying pipe length. Um, you will enter the uh, the starch. Uh, this is uh, all these calculations have been made for starch, so we need to adapt it for flour because flour is a bit diffi uh, more difficult to dry. Uh, you enter the uh, starch flow rate and uh, input product input moisture content. And uh, you put also the air temperature here and the air velocity is fixed at 12 meters per second. And you will get uh, here the output product flow rate, the output um, product moisture, uh, some information on uh, energy efficiency, of course, and uh, information of air output condition. So um, playing with these uh, input data, you can find, uh, determine the right uh, design for uh, your specification. So now uh, another key equipment of the system is the heat exchanger. So um, we said that uh, on a heat exchanger, uh, the main losses are here in the exhaust gas that are released. Uh, they should be released below 200 degrees to have a good efficiency. And um, this is why uh, the, the efficiency of a heat exchanger is very easy to evaluate by measuring this temperature. If you, have at five, if you are at 500 degrees, you still have a lot of energy in the exhaust gas. And, and so uh, that means your um, heat exchanger design can be improved. Uh, as an example uh, of calculation, for example, if you are, if you are at six, 600 degrees at, at the uh, ex exhaust gas, the efficiency, the overall efficiency is about 60% on fuel energy content. While if you have 200 degrees, you are at 88% uh, of uh, efficiency. So um, how is it possible to improve uh, the heat exchanger design? So uh, a very common design that we encounter uh, uh, on field in, in, in many companies is a very simple design with a concentric pipe heat exchanger. So you have um, you have a, a main hot gas pipe and around this pipe, you have the hot air uh, coming on, on one end or the other, but doing only one pass around this uh, hot gas pipe and, um, and going directly to the drive. Uh, the main advantage of that design is that it is very inexpensive to fabricate, but uh, generally the, the energy efficiency is very low because uh, the, the, the heat exchange, the surface contact between the hot air and, and the gas is, uh, is not sufficient, it, it is much too small. And so um, another design is required to uh, increase the heat exchange surface because it is what it, what it is important uh, to improve the efficiency and to improve the heat exchange between the hot gas and the, and the drying air. Uh, so this is the, the, the design uh, that we have proposed and uh, some of those heat exchanger have already been built in, in Ghana, in, uh, in DRC, and uh, also in Nigeria at IITA. Uh, so basically this design, uh, you have a heat exchanger that is in, in two parts, um, uh, one on top of each other. So at the bottom here, you have one here, this is the, uh, the flue gas, the combustion gas uh, circuit. So you have here the, the burner with the combustion chamber. So uh, the hot gas are going through the combustion chamber and then up and in the up section, you have a bundle of, of tubes, of smoke tubes, and, uh, and then to the exhaust. And on the other side, uh, you have the air going uh, in a counter current, current way. So uh, the air inlet is uh, next to the exhaust uh, of the hot gases. So the air inlet is going to pass 
one times, two times, and three times around the around the bundle of, of tubes. And, and then uh, the hot air is going to pass around uh, the combustion chamber and the outlet is uh, next, to the, next to the burner. And so in this way, you maximize the heat exchange and you maximize the heat exchange surface between the two gases. Uh, again, um, oh, another important point to increase the, to improve the heat exchange is that um, it's important to place in the in the smoke pipe. You can place uh, small devices like this that are called turbulators that will um, increase the, the the turbulence and improve the heat exchange uh, in the pipe. This can uh, the use of turbulators can multiply the heat exchange by five to ten depending on the turbulator design. So this is a very good way and very uh, cheap way to uh, improve um, the heat exchanger efficiency without uh, oversizing. It. So th this with uh, using turbulator will consume far less uh, metal uh, steel than uh, increasing the size of the of the heat exchanger. So I have, we have here a small video. Oh yes, it works. So that's a, a small video decomposing the, the equipment, allowing to see what, uh, how it is built inside. Okay. And so uh, on the website, so I will not detail this, design tool because it is uh, quite complicated. You will find the instruction um, there on how to use it. But basically, so you have a, an Excel tool that would allow you to uh, enter the, calculate the hot air demand for the flash dryer you want to use with the, with the heat exchanger that will give you uh, the fuel quantity you need, uh, the burner power you need for, uh, for this heat exchanger, and then the, uh, you have uh, so so uh, the design is an iterative uh, process. So you will need to enter a design, uh, enter the number of tubes, the dimension of the tube, the length, and everything, and and play with those settings to find the right uh, efficient design. So you also have um, you also have in, in the in the Excel file. Uh, 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 a diagram that will show you where are those uh, main important design dimensions. And uh, in the end, you will have also uh, a, a performance calculation sheet that will uh, show you the, the, the main performance of the heat exchanger. Okay, uh, now another equipment that is uh, very important um, not especially for energy efficiency, but for uh, overall processing capacity is the, uh, the blower siding and specification because we have uh, noted during uh, company diagnostics that um, there are many problems with blower design. Uh, so the, the problem is that, uh, as I said before, the drying capacity is proportional to air velocity. And on field, um, uh, many flash dryers we have seen operate with air velocity as low as three to five meters per second. So that reduces a lot uh, the capacity, the drying capacity that they could achieve. So this is why it's very important to uh, be able to specify or to build a proper heat exchanger. So to specify, uh, uh, sorry, blowers, uh, and to, sp to specify uh, properly a blower uh, to a provider, you will need to give him uh, the volume flow rate you want and uh, the pressure drop. So uh, that can be, uh, the pressure drop can be uh, uh, measured uh, on existing equipment or it can be calculated. Uh, again, we provide a tool to do this cal calculation. So the pressure drop needs to be calculated on the whole system. That means that will be the last equipment you are going to dimensions because um, the heat exchanger 
the dryer and the cyclone all have an impact on, uh, on the pressure drop. So the, the pressure drop actually is the, the, the resistance of the, uh, of the system to the air flowing through it. So uh, what you will find on, uh, on, uh, on, a, on a blower uh, specification is you will have a performance curve. Uh, this is in green on this graph. So this is a graph showing the pressure drop and the volume flow rate. <clears throat> and you will see that uh, if you want to increase, the blower will have a, curve, a decreasing curve like this, meaning that at low flow rate, it can uh, provide higher pressure. And if you want to increase flow rate, it will, it will pro provide lower pressure. And actually your system will have a, 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 a typical operating curve that is the opposite way, meaning that uh, in your system, if you want to increase the volume flow rate, it will increase the pressure drop because the, the resistance to the airflow increases. And so, for example, if you want, you have your operating curve like this, and you want your system to operate uh, at this flow rate, and you have that gives you this pressure drop. If you select uh, a blower with this curve, you will actually get an operating point that is uh, a bit higher where the two uh, curves crosses. So you, you will get a, a higher uh, volume flow rate than what you want. <clears throat> so the idea when you choose a, uh, a blower is to uh, choose the, the blower that has uh, the most uh, convenient uh, curve for your, uh, for your need. So um, on the website, you will be able to download the uh, pressure drop calculation tools. So uh, briefly, um, in this pressure drop, you will define here the airflow rate. So you will give the, the nominal diameter of the, um, of the drying pipe, uh, the air velocity and the air temperature. Uh, and then you will be able to calculate the pressure drops through uh, different elements of the pipe. So I only gave some example here. So you will have, for example, the pipe entrance that will generate quite high pressure drop. Then you can have uh, elbows. You will have uh, generally a bend at the top. You will have also probably a venturi and you can have uh, other elements that are proposed in the tool. And in the end, you will sum up the pressure drop. And this is a, a value that you can give to a blower provider uh, to select a, an appropriate blower. Um, an interesting discussion on the, on, the, on the blower choice. And <clears throat> we noted that on, on uh, designing and, and choosing uh, a blower with one uh, of the companies partnering the scaling project. Uh, an interesting discussion is uh, where to put the blower. Uh, you have two possibilities. You will have uh, um, dryers, flash dryers, in what we call in positive pressure. So in that case, the blower is uh, in generally right after the heat exchanger and you fit the product just before the blower. So that will the, the whole pipe in positive pressure. And the other possibility is to uh, set the dryer at the, uh, set the blower at the end of the dryer right after the cyclone. And, and in this case, the, the whole system will be in negative pressure and the, the blower will suck the air through the whole system. And we noted that there are a lot of advantages for uh, this design and, and a lot of disadvantages on, on positive pressure because what happens is that uh, you will need a higher flow rate uh, through your blower in positive pressure because it operates at higher temperature. So the same quantity of air, uh, as the temperature is higher, uh, the, the air density is lower. So uh, that will give you, uh, you will require a, a bigger uh, blower. And, and thus uh, higher uh, rated power. Uh, another thing is that uh, doing like this, you have the product going through the blower. So uh, the blower is going to work with dust. 
Uh, so that means you're going to have a higher wear. Uh, you will be able to use only a straight blade design that has quite low efficiency and that will result in, uh, in, in higher uh, power requirements. For example, as Thierry explained yesterday, uh, for those designs on the same dryer, when you require uh, 12 kilowatts, a 12 kilowatt blower in, in positive pressure, you only need seven kilowatts in negative pressure. Uh, another thing is that, of course, in this setting in positive pressure, the blower will work at higher temperature, which is uh, not improving the, the, the life of the equipment. It will require higher maintenance. Um, then other advantages, uh, of, of negative pressure is that in case of air leakage in, a, in the flash drying system, uh, in positive pressure, you will get dust all over the, all over the workshop. While uh, in negative pressure, if you have air leakage, you will have no problem because you will only have uh, some fresh air entering the, uh, entering the dryer and that will not waste, uh, that will not waste product. So the on, only advantage uh, of positive pressure is that you will not need a, a, a disaggregator, a small mill to uh, pulverize the product at the inlet because this work is done by the blower. While uh, on the other hand, in negative pressure, you will need uh, this uh, small uh, feeding system that is a mill that will disaggregate properly the product. Uh, okay, so uh, let's talk about uh, the, the, the feeding system. That is uh, another very important uh, piece of equipment. Uh, so uh, the, the main function of the, of the feeding system is to ensure stable and consistent feeding. Uh, so uh, the, the, the main, the first part of the feeding system is the, is the hopper. Uh, so as you know, uh, wet, uh, wet flour is a, is a sticky product that tends to, to form lumps and bridges. So uh, you will need a, um, a hopper that is equipped with <clears throat> agitating paddles uh, to, to break the lumps and the bridges and avoid the interruption of, uh, of, of the material feeding. So here uh, we proposed uh, two different design of hopper, one cylindrical design with agitating paddles and, and the, the a screw feeder comes at the bottom or uh, a V-shaped uh, feeder. So uh, the cylindrical feeder is maybe a bit more expensive, but it's what is more common uh, on uh, industrial dryers, especially working with starch because uh, this design can work with, uh, with flour, but with starch, it may, it may not be uh, sufficient to avoid the formation of bridges. Uh, then the second function of the, of the feeding system is to ensure the proper disaggregation of the product into small particles. So uh, uh, making particles smaller will uh, increase the dryer capacity and improve the energy efficiency. So what we have done uh, on the pilot flash dryer uh, at SIAT and that works very well is, uh, is the system like this. It is a cage mill. So you have um, here on the right, you can see the cylindrical hopper, uh, the screw that is discharging the product at the center of the cage mill. And uh, inside the cage mill, you have uh, a fixed part here in blue and, and a moving part in green. And uh, that makes uh, several rows of, of small bars that will uh, break the products into, into uh, very small parts. Uh, so this, uh, uh, this mill is running at very high speed, like uh, 2000 RPM. Uh, another important point about product feeding is the, is the control of feeding. Because um, actually the, the product final moisture depends on uh, air output temperature. So, um, a good way to control, actually a good way to control uh, the feeding is to look at the, at the air outlet temperature. 
and uh, to stabilize the air outlet temperature. When, when, what we can see on this graph is that here you have the inlet starch moisture and on each cross here, you have uh, the label here is the, is, the, is the outlet product moisture. So for example, uh, here, uh, if you have an air outlet temperature of 50 degrees, the, the product is at 16% uh, moisture content. But if you have, uh, let's say 65 degrees at the outlet, the product is at 7% uh, moisture content. So that makes a huge difference. That means that uh, this uh, temperature level is very, uh, has a very sensitive impact uh, on, the, on the product moisture. And, and what we want here is to well control the product moisture because you don't need to dry more than uh, 10 to 12% moisture content. And, and if you dry more, you will uh, waste energy for, uh, for nothing and you will get less final product. <clears throat> Uh, so uh, this, this uh, control of the feeding can be uh, done manually, but it can be done uh, more efficiently with what, what we call the PID temperature controller. So this is a small device that will uh, read the, uh, the air outlet temperature with the, with the, from a sensor, from a temperature sensor, and that will uh, control the screw feeder to get uh, th that will control the speed of the, of the screw feeder to get uh, a stable uh, feed rate. So here is an example of the, the, the outlet temperature when we use uh, a, a constant RPM at the, uh, at the screw feeder. So you can see that you have quite a lot of variations of, of the temperature, meaning in terms that you have a lot of variations of the product moisture. And those var uh, this, the, the, the feed rate varies because uh, the product is sticky. So you have some bridges or lumps and, and, and the feed rate is actually inconsistent when you have only a fixed RPM. Uh, on the other hand, so what, what we did to, to improve that is to install this small PID controller in which you can, uh, you can uh, set a, uh, an output temperature value. And, and this is the result you will get with a PID controller, which, which is the, 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 the outlet temperature is very stable. And so as a consequence, the, the, product, um, the product moisture is very uh, homogeneous and, and consistent. Okay, so uh, online uh, about this uh, feeding system, we only have a tool to uh, calculate the dimensions and, and, uh, and the RPM you, de you need on the, on the screw feeder, but um, it is, uh, yeah, it is uh, approximative calculation because you, you never know how the, the, the screw is gonna be filled and uh, it's better to have, uh, it may be better to make several trials to, uh, to ensure the design is, is correct. So uh, now we'll just give a summary of the design tools we have available online. So uh, as I said, as I presented, there are uh, tools for the flash dryer itself, a tool for the heat exchanger, uh, one to, cal to calculate the pressure drop uh, to get the right blower specification. So this is uh, more appropriate for uh, new dryers. You also have a screw feeder sizing tool and uh, another uh, tool to calculate cyclone dimensions. So this is uh, available at, at the address mentioned here. Uh, so finally, uh, um, an important uh, an important comment is that uh, uh, when you want to design a new dryer or retro, uh, retrofit an existing dryer, it's important to consider the whole system because all the elements depend on one another. If you uh, if you change the blower to have uh, to have higher uh, airflow rate. Uh, probably you will have to adapt also your heat exchanger because uh, your heat exchanger will not uh, give the right temperature uh, if you double the airflow rate. <clears throat> uh, 
so the, the general method we proposed for a new design, new dryer design is first to well define the specification in terms of processing capacity, uh, evaluate the best product moisture, uh, input product moisture you can get, what is the, uh, the fuel available, um, then for the dryer design, so we recommend an air velocity of 12 meter per second and air temperature, uh, it can be a bit higher than 180, you can go up to 200, 220 degrees, that will improve the efficiency. Um, then uh, setting a pipe length of 25 to uh, 30 meters and uh, use the, the, the design tool to calculate the, the, the pipe diameter that will give you the capacity you want. And once you have the dryer designed, then you can uh, size, calculate the, the dimensions of the feeding system in terms of screw, screw dimensions and RPM. Uh, you will be able then to calculate the uh, air heater, so the, the, the heat exchanger and the, and the burner power you need. Uh, and then you will calculate the cyclone, so the type of cyclone you need, because there are uh, different design and dimensions. And in the end, you will calculate the fan characteristics, because uh, as I said, the pressure drop depends on the whole system design. Uh, the idea when doing this is to consider various scenarios and potential evolutions of, uh, of, of production capacity re uh, with respect to, to uh, the demand for uh, the demand of product from the market from the from the from the supply uh, you can secure and so on and yeah consider various scenario and and then calculate the the, <clears throat> the profitability of each scenario uh, and alejandro will be uh, talking a bit more about business plans of uh, flash drying systems Okay, thank you for your attentions, and if you have uh, questions, you are welcome. Thank you so much, Dr. Arno. I don't know, maybe we can attend some questions now, or maybe in a round table after the coffee uh, break. Thierry, what do you think? Uh, thank you, Arnaud, for a very instructive presentation. Uh, we have about five to ten minutes to, to take a few questions. So please, uh, you can write them in the chat box or you can raise your hand to, to, to speak and ask your question directly. Yeah, I will review the chat uh, shortly for any questions. Hey, Thierry, there's a question in the Q&A box. Okay. And it's similar to the question asked yesterday. Thank you, Abbas. The, the question is, can the flash dryer be used in making cassava plates uh, or gari? Maybe, Arlo? Um. So for uh, cassava flakes, that won't work because the, the cassava flakes are too big to be dried in, in such a system. So they, they won't have to time to dry uh, properly in a, in a flash dryer and uh, they won't be conveyed probably uh, by, the, by the airflow. And uh, for Gary, I'm not expert, but as far as I know, uh, Gary needs roasting and, uh, and and you will not get uh, that roasting in a, in a flash dryer. Uh, uh, I think the, the you, you will not get the, the product quality you want uh, in a flash dryer because uh, Gary is normally fried on a, on, a, on a plate that makes the, the particle temperatures go much higher than in a flash dryer. But maybe someone can complete on the Gary production. Yeah, let me, let me add to that. Um, we, we answered this question yesterday. Uh, basically, we, we said flash dryers are not designed for Gary uh, production. Uh, but maybe we can talk a little bit about 
the science behind Gary frying. Frying of Gary is in two stages. At the beginning of frying, it is gelatinization that occurs. And that's the time you get agglomeration of the starch. And then you, you begin to get the, um, the, the, the different sizes uh, when frying. So the cooking occurs at the beginning. And then after that, drying starts. So the two operations will have to be done by frying. Uh, we know that in some traditional uh, methods in some places, um, frying is done at the beginning, gelatinization of course, and then they remove the material from the frying pan to be dry in the sun. But that is actually not appropriate. So, so that has been discouraged uh, over some years. So flash dryers will not <clears throat> be suitable to achieve that first stage of frying or, or garification. So, so flash dryer cannot be used for gary frying. Thank you, Dr. Rabas, and thank you, Arnaud. Uh, we have uh, more questions. Uh, one is, uh, can the available tools suffice for downscaling uh, design for some SMEs that cannot afford bigger units? Uh, Arnaud, would you like to take this? Uh, yes, uh, uh, those tools were basically made uh, for, for that purpose. Uh, uh, the thing is that I think Alejandro will tell a bit more about it, but uh, as a, a flash drying system is a quite expensive equipment, uh, there is a, uh, I mean, for a, a profitability, uh, you cannot uh, reach profitability if you have only uh, 100 kilo per hours or well, less than that, I mean. <clears throat> so probably you will need to calculate what is the, uh, you can, of course, you can use the, the tools to, uh, to size uh, the appropriate system, but then you will need to evaluate the cost of building it and, and, uh, and the return on investment that you will get with this. Because if you double the size of a, of a of a flash dryer, you will not double the cost at all. But then that depends on the on the processing capacity. That's a matter of uh, economies of scale. Uh, thank you, Arnaud. Uh, the, the next question uh, is, oh, we, we have two questions about uh, fuels. Uh, one is, how do we determine which heating medium is cheaper? So, for example, between gas and diesel. And then the second one is uh, how many liters of fuel, uh, diesel, for example, is needed to dry one ton of flour or starch? Uh, um, so, about, uh, about uh, the cost of fuels, uh, so uh, basically, for a, for a given fuel, you will have a heating value. Uh, that is given in, in megajoule per kilo in general or in kilowatt hour per kilo. And uh, so if you have the price of both, that will give you the basic price in, in uh, dollar per kilowatt hour of, uh, of, of fuel. The thing is that uh, with gas, a big difference with gas is that with gas, you won't need a heat exchanger. So that makes a huge difference because you don't need uh, heat exchanger equipment, and that will reduce a lot the investment cost. Uh, on, uh, if you are using gas, you can actually uh, directly use uh, uh, a gas burner to heat up uh, the drying air, and, and you can the, the, the smoke of the gas are clean enough to be used to dry a food product. So uh, that, that's what we are doing on the the on the pilot dryer at SIAT, we only have a, a, a gas burner uh, inside, the, inside the air duct that is going directly to the dryer. Uh, so if you can ensure uh, gas supply, that is uh, most of the time, I think, the best option. And uh, the other question was, uh, how many liters of fuel do you need to produce one ton of flour? Yeah. Uh, 
so I, I give some I give some figures about this in the presentation. I think it was between between 40 and 80 liters of fuel depending on the on the initial moisture content of the product if you have a good dryer and a good heat exchanger. Between 40 and 80 liters. Per ton of dried flour. Um, okay, next, uh, we, we have a question about the PID controller. Uh, I yes. wonder, concerning the PID controller, is this electronic material uh, sufficiently resistant, particularly in variable environmental conditions found in Africa? <clears throat> uh, yes, that's an electronic equipment, but that is quite simple and, and robust. Uh, and it is uh, not very expensive. We have uh, used one in uh, in Colombia again on the on the on the, on the dryer, and uh, and we have tropical weather conditions there. And so far, we had no problem with uh, with this equipment. They are quite reliable. I guess it, it depends on the quality. You you can depending on the price, you can have stronger yes. equipment or some equipment that we can faster. Yeah. Um, okay, we have several questions coming. Uh, thank you for, for your interest. Uh, one, one question of, uh, of Peter Folawole from uh, ITA. What, what can we do to reduce the cost of flash dryers? <laughs> That that is a good question, <laughs> but that uh, uh, that is to be studied uh, case by case because I think depending on the country we have um, uh, very different prices of raw materials, especially stainless steel. Uh, so that's a big problem. For example, in I think in DRC the, the the price of stainless steel sheets are uh, is very high, uh, and then the other uh, component of the cost is the is the labor, uh, so that's a question we would need to work on with the equipment manufacturers uh, to understand what are the uh, the, the main uh, points in the design that that increase the the fabrication cost. I think we, we had a, a discussion on that yesterday as well, and it, it's difficult to, to to reduce the cost much. And for, from our estimations, it's difficult to to achieve less than twenty between twenty and thirty thousand dollars for for one equipment. equipment. I think it's quite proportional to the to the weight of metal you put in it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay, we, we we have a, a comment uh, from Mr. Uh, uh My experience uh, of attempt at using flash dryer uh, to, to combine the two stages described by Dr. Abbas. So we gelatinize first, and then we flash dry the gelatinized product. So indeed, it's it has to be done in two, two steps. Uh, then, uh, from the same person, uh, they would like more explanations on the use of the turbulator. Uh, you can find uh, quite a lot of information on that on the on the website. You can have uh, various design of uh, turbulator, but the, the main uh, it's it's a very very simple device. It's a, uh, the, the simpler design you can do is to um, is to take a what do you call it a, a flat bar of metal and and twist it, um, and so that will make the 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 flow going uh, around in the tube. And and these are just uh, pieces of metal that you insert in the in the smoke pipes. 
the, the design I showed in, in my presentation was a bit more uh, elaborate, but it's not, uh, it, it's just to improve uh, a bit more the, the, the heat exchange, but I, I'm not sure it is uh, cost efficient to take time to, to build so complicated uh, turbulators. And could it be used? Could, could those turbulators be used and retrofitted on existing heat exchangers? Of course. Yes. Okay. Definitely. So that might be a way to improve yeah if you have a good heat exchange surface well if you have uh, many smoke pipes that can improve a lot the, the heat exchange i think uh, dr abbas would you like to comment further on the gary um uh, with, with respect to the question asked by Engineer Oseni, uh, yes. is that, yeah, <clears throat> I, I put a text across, you know, if you are going to combine uh, manual frying with flash dryer, then you probably need about 50 people who are doing the uh, partial frying and pull the materials together to feed into the flash dryer because the capacity of the flash dryer is by far will be by far more than what individual uh, 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 people who are using fryers can turn out per hour or per minute. So the question is how do you balance the quantity that comes out from this first stage before it goes into the flash dryer for the second stage? So that's, that's the challenge with that approach of doing partial frying and then putting the flash dryer to do the frying. But um, yes, the effort we are making uh, in this project is to um, get the, the, the design of small flash dryers out there for equipment manufacturers to learn from what we have done and then design very small flash dryers. So if that can be done, I mean, uh, Dr. Awuyali yesterday was asking if it's possible to make laboratory scale uh, flash dryer and, and the answer was given. So if it's going to be possible, let fabricators try it. 100 kg per hour of flash dryer from what we have done uh, in this project it's actually possible to have that. And then if Gary, if people are making Gary think that it is cheaper for them to combine partial frying with use of small, small flash dryers, then, then we see. I think it's something that uh, for us, we want to see people uh, put um, different innovations into what we are putting out today. And probably in the next uh, 15 years, 20 years, we'll be telling a different story um from uh, what we know today so let people try it over to you mr okay. chair uh, okay we we still we are still receiving questions uh, one is from mr segun uh, ladele uh, ceo of golden golden labs nigeria like limited uh, can your team help us review the efficiency of our flash dryer because they use over 100 liters to dry one ton of uh, HQCF. Um, would you yeah. like to? to... Yeah, uh, Dr. Ashiru advised that he should send an email to us. Um, I, and we need to quickly say it right away that at the end of this project, we will not have resources to uh, provide direct uh, technical assistance at the factories of equipment fabricators or processors. So we don't have the resources to do it, uh, but we have the knowledge. So if anyone is interested in improving the efficiency of their flash dryers or to even diagnose and know what, the, what problems their flash dryers are having, they should contact us, but they will have to cover the cost. Uh, since um, for us, this is uh, the work that we do to help value chain actors, we will share our knowledge and help them to understand 
the problems with their flash dryers. And if they have resources, then they would invite equipment fabricators uh, to correct for them. And we can provide technical assistance to, do it, to the equipment fabricators to do it, but they have to finance it. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Abbas. Okay, and a related question uh, is, where, where is the new design of the improved uh, flash dryer installed in Nigeria? And how can we access it? Dr. Adibita, I hope he's here. Yeah, he's here. Dr. Adibita, could you please answer this? Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, the new flash dryer, I'm going to make a presentation. Uh, uh, I'm going to make a presentation data. So we are, we are going to, it's going to be, it's going to be part of my presentation. So we have the new design already installed at uh, Piro uh, under the, the, under the supervisions of the project team. Everything, both the tubulator, everything, uh, we, we, we use the, uh, the design to, to build the, uh, uh, the new design of flash dryer. Uh, and those participants from Nigeria that participated in training CR, they were the one that did it. I mean, the local equipment manufacturer who are the partners of the project. So thank you. Thank you, Adegbite. Yes, yeah, so th there is one demonstration dryer uh, installed at Piro uh, in Lagos. Thank you. Uh, yeah, and then uh, I see one more question, whether the proceedings of the program we will be sent to the participants. Uh, yes, we, we can share the, the video recording of the, of the presentations, the discussions. Thank you. Uh, I think it is time to move to the next presentation. So I will give the floor to Dr. Alejandro Taborda. Uh, who will speak about the economic and financial aspects of uh, investing in a uh, flash dryer system. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Thierry. So, welcome. Uh, I will present the business plans uh, web tool that is in this web tool is in the flash dryer web page. But um, I recommend to use directly this link that I, I will put in the chat. Maybe if you want to follow this conversation, this presentation, this exercise. So my recommendation is this, because if, if you are using a computer, you can go to the settings and select white mode. In the white mode, you can uh, use uh, a comfortable, a white uh, web tool uh, form. Maybe if you are in your mobile, in your device, you just can see just one column. And sometimes you can uh, put information, input information, and after you go down and see the output. But it's, it's the same. Um, okay, this this web tool. Uh, this uh, tool is a use a predeterminate information based on um, average of business plans of multiple cassava flour processors from DR Congo, Nigeria, and Colombia. This study was conducted during the development of the scaling readiness flash dryer project during uh, 2019 and 2020. Although the information used could be uh, different with respect to, to other countries. Uh, this exercise could be used as uh, um, an estimation of pre-feasibility pre study of investment on in cassava flour processing using flash drying technology. This is important to, to use because uh, yesterday in the chat box, I, uh, I, I saw that some of you say that the, the price uh, of the steel is really high 
increase. That, that is normal. That happens as well here in, in Latin America after a pandemic, after COVID situation. So maybe the prices that you find in this web tool uh, is lower than the reality, the current reality in your country. But this could be as um, an interesting exercise that you can use this, this web tool. Um, so I will explain this uh, uh, exercise. First of all, we, um, we, just, uh, we have information just from three countries. They are Congo, Nigeria, and Colombia. So we found that the, the investment costs of the Congo, if we compare these three scenarios, uh, DR Congo is an uh, intermediate uh, investment cost. Nigeria has a low investment cost compared to DR Congo is lower, the, 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 the investment cost. And Colombia is really high uh, compared to Nigeria and DR Congo. So for this exercise, uh, use uh, Congo as an example. First of all, uh, you need to select the country and also the web tool asks you uh, for a quantity of the cassava flour demand in tons per week. Suppose that you know how many tons per week um, your clients uh, need that you provide and you select in this bar, you select the, the quantity that you need to provide, that, that you need to produce for sell uh, this uh, cassava, these tons of cassava flour. Um, next, you need to provide this information: how many tons of cassava roots would be able available um, in your location every week. So this is a really important thing because maybe you you had a huge demand, but there is not enough cassava roots in you location. So for example, suppose that the cassava roofs that are available in your location is lower. So the quantity, the, the web tool uh, highlight this note that say that say that the quantity of roofs is not enough to process the quantity of flower demand in your in your place. So after that the the web tool provide information about the capacity of the flash dryer that you need. If you need more uh, tons of cassava flour uh, per week uh, in, your, in your market, target market, obviously the, the capacity of the flash dryer increase. So also we use the uh, information that we got, we put inside this web tool, about the price of the flash dryer. So for example, in case of the 300 kg per hour capacity flash dryer, the price is almost 35,000 uh, US dollars in DRC. But if you check this out, please, if you change the country, it's almost 20,000 US dollars. And in Colombia, it's almost uh, five, um, 50, a thousand US dollars. So that depends of the country that you select. We continue in the air combo for this exercise. So uh, next, uh, we need to provide information about the complementary technology. When we are talking about complementary, uh, complementary technology, we're talking about press, granulate, uh, Raspel, granulator, gas burner, heat exchanger, uh, pit control system. Dr. Arno talked about this uh, uh, equipment, some of these equipments before. So there is, there could be a different scenario. Maybe you are um, a cassava flour processor. You have, you you have that that complementary info. Uh, technology, or maybe you are new in this business, you don't have anything of this, so you need to invest in in all uh, infrastructure. Uh, you need to to get, you need to buy all these uh, equipments. 
the flash dryers, of, of, of course, but also all this equipment, the press, the granulator, the gas burner, the heat exchanger, etc. In this case, if there is if your case you need all the equipment, you select the option yes. But if you are in this moment, cassava uh, flower processor, and do you have all this information? You select the option no. If you select the option no, the total investment price is the same of the flash dryer price. But if you need the complementary technology, so you will uh, the, the total investment price or the cost or the total investment uh, is the sum of the flash dryer price and the complementary technology price. We use also a predetermined uh, price uh, of these uh, complementary technology equipments the, with the information that we collect in these countries. Also, we, this change the country by country, but um, my highlight that this could be different than the current situation of the pandemic. And also there is a different, different dynamics uh, continuously that change the price, but this is a good exercise that you can use as an, as an example. Um, okay, so there are the, we continue with the two more important uh, parameters that we are gonna use in this assessment. The first one is the cost of the uh, cassava roofs and the selling price of the HQCF, the cassava flour, high quality cassava flour. So the price um, of the tons of cassava roofs in your location, in your place, in US dollars. Uh, we use US dollars because we, this is a web tool that we can use in different parts of, uh, of the world. So uh, it's better if you use this, um, this coin. Um, I say that this is the most important parameters of this exercise, and you will see why I say that. Okay, after that, we need to indicate what is the percentage of the participation of the time of the origin of the investment. That could be the own resources or bank loan, maybe more, but in this case, in this example, we use only two, two things, the own resources and the bank loan. So suppose that you got the money for this. You don't need the bank loan. If I say that this 100% of the, of the money that I use to, uh, in this invest, investment is yours, so bank loan is 0% and disappear all the information about the loan. But maybe you can say, okay, I have uh, the 50% 50, 50 of, the, of the money and another 50%, I will ask a, a bank loan. In this case, uh, the tool provides some information about the loan, payments, the interest, and other information. Especially, it's really important this, the total value of the inter interest to be covered after pay uh, all the loan, um, and the value of the credit request and the pay. So obviously you need to provide how many years uh, will take, uh, you will take to pay this loan. Suppose that you, you uh, ask a, a loan and you will pay during five years. And you need to provide two uh, information, the opportunity cost of the investment and the annual rate bank interest in percentage. Um, in most of the countries is uh, around, 12% per year. This is uh, around 1% uh, percent per month. Um, what is the annual opportunity cost? Suppose that you, you have 50,000 uh, US dollars. So how many options do you have to invest this amount of, of money? Maybe you're thinking in obviously in, in, in uh, cassava flour, technology for process cassava flour, but also you may, maybe you have another options, another business. So the, the opportunity cost is that uh, 
that uh, percentage of rentability that you expect to have in this business. And this could be uh, the minimum that you expect to get apart to the rentability or the profitability of the exercise of the business or the cassava flour processing uh, rentability. Is, is the, the percentage that the, this business provide as an opportunity to, because you can use this budget for another business. Uh, so this is different of the interest of the bank loan. So after that, uh, you provide these parameters. I don't know if you follow in your own computer and your own device. Uh, after that, uh, you can see the cash flow. What is a cash flow? Is a, uh, in this, uh, uh, table, and we provide information about the sales, the production costs, uh, and some parameters, uh, financial parameters that uh, will help us to get this um, evaluation of e economic indicators. Uh, this is the internal rate return, the net present value, and the financial viability. We get uh, the explanation of these parameters here, a really simple explanation. For example, the first one is the profitability of the project. Uh, some experts in the cassava flour industry consider that the minimum profitability of the cassava flour processing should be around 15 and um, 20%. Yeah. So if you had, uh, like an, in this case, of this example, you had um, um, a profitability or an internal rate return um, less than this uh, amount. This is not a good idea. This is not a good uh, a business for you. So um, what is the net present value? This brings the future cash flows occurring present value. You know that in the, the money, in the future has not, uh, has not the same value to the present. So this um, indicator uh, brings uh, to the present value all that money that we are assessing in this cash flow. So this analysis allows to see the future profits or losses as this case, because we got in this first example, we had losses to the current rate of money. So, is uh, it, it is necessary to, to have this uh, as a positive uh, number, but consider that is a good business. And what is the financial viability of the project? Is the difference between the net present value and the total investment of the project? That you remember that, for example, the total investment of this in the Air Congo for um, the capacity of 300 kg per hour is almost 50,000 US dollars. In this case, after 10 years of the assessment, because we use a cash flow of 10 years, the assessment uh, give you that you will lose almost 70,000 US dollars. Obviously, this is not a good idea. This is not a good business. I told you before that the most important parameters that you have is the cassava uh, roots, fresh roots price or, or cost, and the selling price of the used KCF. I'm talking about the cassava flower. This is the more important because if this changes a little bit, check this out, how change the the financial uh, parameters, the indicators, economic indicators. For example, if my, if the cost of the cassava roots is lower, check this out. The indicators change dram dramatically. For example, now we got a really important difference in the, in the profitability of the project we got um, good numbers in this example, in this exercise, as well of the selling price of the, suppose that we got the same cost at the beginning and the, in, in our exercise, but our now our selling price is almost uh, far 
400 US dollars per one ton of HQCF. In this case, also decaders is good. So obviously this is a really good exercise, but the reflection, the final reflection is the most important thing is the price, the cost of the roofs, of the cassava roofs, fresh cassava roofs, I'm talking about fresh cassava roofs, and the selling price. And this is something that you need to study before you invest in this kind of technology. Sometimes in, we found that in some countries, for example, in some places of Nigeria, this is a really challenge, a really issue because the yields of the cassava flow and the cassava uh, roofs production is really low. So that increased the price of the, of the, cassava, the raw material, in this case, the cassava roofs. So this is important. In other, we found in another countries that also the selling price of the cassava um, flour is not a good because there is a, the market is not adapted to the small scale uh, um, market or, or cassava factories, cassava flour factories. Obviously, when the market is adapted to the huge scale, a big scale um, for a processor that has a, a that uh, has a big scale uh, technology, obviously, obviously the, the production cost is lower than uh, a small scale uh, uh, processors. Uh, in that case, it's, it's different, it's, uh, it's really difficult situation because for them, the selling price is not convenient for this kind of, uh, of situation. So around these two parameters, uh, around the cost of cassava roots and, and around the price of, of, of cassava flour, there is a lot of um, a lot of things that you need to study and you need to understand your your location in your uh, in, in in your territory and your your place your region. What is happening about the cassava value chain around you? Uh, and this is a lot of information that it is important to have before you invest in this kind of technology. So this is an example, and this is a summary of, of the use of these uh, business plans. Uh, but I need, to, I need to highlight this information uh, that I put here. Uh, it is recommend that before you making an investment, a complete study of business plans with update data, because this information is not using update data and update information in your specific location should be carried out. Yeah, this is a good example. This is a good web tool, but before you invest, it's better if you use this as an example and you carry out a complete business plans and, and you understand all the parameters that you, you, you need to understand before you invest. So thank you so much. I don't know if you have some questions. Thank you, Alejandro. Uh, many thanks, it's, uh, it's a very good presentation. Uh, we, we've talked a lot about the technical aspects, the engineering aspects, which are important, but of course, you know, this, the economic environments and the, the economic conditions in each specific locality are very important for the success of any uh, investment project in cassava processing. Um, that time is running, so may maybe we will take one or two questions if, uh, if there is, and then we, we can have a short coffee break uh, before the, the final session of the, of the workshop. Uh, please, any any questions? Okay, if no questions. It's now uh, thirty past the hour. Past the hour. Uh, so, ah, uh, one question is coming from uh, Kelly from uh, Uganda. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, Kelly is asking if uh, the web tool indicate the project is now 
viable, viable in DR Congo. What about in Colombia and Nigeria? Um, no, 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 no. Uh, the the a one project, one processing project could be uh, could have uh, uh, good indicators inside one country. Sometimes you need to consider a, a, a lot of information. For example, Dr. Abbas yesterday said that it's important to take into account the logistic costs. Uh, for example, in, in DR Congo, uh, some, uh, some processors is in a rural area, another is is in, in really close to the big city as Kinshasa. Um, the cost of uh, transportation of cassava flour or even the cassava roots can affect the, the, the profitability of this exercise. So uh, I, I, if you in, understand this, um, no, 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 this is now what I'm trying to say. In Congo, even in Congo, in DR Congo, they are a really good market. And the, this business is really increased, uh, uh, present um, interesting progress during these last years in DR Congo. Something different in Nigeria, sometimes it's difficult to find a market for a small scale um, flash, uh, for uh, cassava flow processing units. But that depends in one country for different and um, really particular condition of one processors can be uh, profitable, uh, profit, um, can has a project, uh, a good profitability or not. You need to study your own uh, particular conditions, assess the all complete information and try to use the conclusions for, for take the decision. Okay. Can, I, can I add something? Please, Dr. Abbas. Please. Yeah, yeah, okay, thank you. Um, so, there are no two businesses that are the same. Even if those businesses are producing the same products, because the costs of operating a factory would vary from one management to the next management, even if those two factories are side, sitting side by side. So the example that has just been shown, I think what we need to take out from that is the cost of fabricating the flash dryer in DRC Congo compared to Nigeria. That's the most important information that is there. I hope Kelly would, would get that. that. That's the most important thing. Now, the cost of managing or using the flash dryer will then vary or change depending on um, where the factory is, where the raw material is. There is something I, I I think we should add to this. Even in Nigeria, the factories that are successful today, Niji Lucas is on this platform. His factory is very successful. Igustin, I understand. I think yesterday there was a representative from Igustin and one other factory. These factories are located at the center of the farms. For cassava businesses, whether we're using machines or not, we need to begin to change the way we make the investments. Let's remember the, the, the profitability of a sugar factory is 70% dependent on the factory being at the center of the sugarcane plantation. The profitability of a tea factory is 70% dependent on the factory, the tea factory being at the center of tea plantation. That is the way cassava should be. And so we need to understand it that way. And that's the most important thing. And of course, uh, Alejandro has already shown from uh, the example that he, he did just now. Just by, reducing, just by reducing the cost of fresh cassava, you can come from negative to positive. That's the most important thing. So that's the way we should, that's the way we should see it. We can never generalize that uh, cassava, uh, cassava flour production or flash dryer use in Nigeria is uh, not profitable or not. That's, we can we can't generalize. That's really too big you know, to, to generalize. And in actual fact, 
Uh, Layuka is here, the managing director is here. I tell you, using flash dry in, in DRC is extremely, extremely uh, profitable because of the price of the cassava starch and the price of high quality cassava flour in Kinshasa. So if anybody wants to make investment, please go to DRC also. You would be able to make money, but it depends on how you manage uh, the, the factory. There's money also in Nigeria. Uh, it depends on how you manage the factory and planning of your logistics. Thank you very much. So we should, Alejandro repeated it. No, that's not what he's trying to say. He just showed this as an example of how to use this tool. I think that's the most important thing. Everyone that wants to make investment in high quality cassava production, start production to use flash drive, we encourage you to use this tool. You will know your own indices, different from the uh, indices of a fellow investor. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Abbas. Uh, so I think we can have a short coffee break. Uh, now it's uh, 35, 37 past the hour. Uh, we can reconvene uh, at 55 past the hour. Uh, please. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Which is based in Kinshasa? Which is based in Kinshasa? Uh, with the with the help of uh, the flood dry project, um, a, a study was conducted to evaluate the flood dry that were in use in DRC. At the time of study, we had about three of them working respectively in uh, Bukangalonzo, uh, at La Yuka and Kong Central Province, and uh, at Nitrupro in Kinshasa. So it, the, the, the outcome was that the three fries dryer was efficient in drying, but the heat exchanger uh, when not working uh, correctly, and it consumed a lot of fuel. Also, the, the, the air velocity was low. It was three to six meters per, per second. So the output was not uh, very high. It came to be 0. 0. 0.8 to 1.0 kg a ton per day. The flat dry tube left were, were short, 13 to 16. The ice at 16 meters. So they so the, the with the with the the, pro, the project team, um, we tried to find some solution. Uh, one of them was that they should calibrate correctly the burner in order to, 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 to have the needed calorie, calorie instead of burning a lot of fuel, and then you will not use all the, the energy produced. They also, the, the life of the heat exchanges were modified. And the recommendation was that the heat exchange also uh, uh, adds should be uh, should be modified, and then after that, after the, the, some of these modification were made, Layuka found out by modifying its heat exchanger, it reduces fuel consumption by almost thirty percent. Also, the speed, the the, the the velocity of the air velocity was a little bit increased, so. Temperature, the temperature could increase from uh, to, to reach about 150 in in few in few minutes. In, in order to push the use of uh, efficient flash dryer in uh, across the across, across DIC, uh, a workshop was organized in Kinshasa in which the government officials, the financial institutions, uh, people from the from Ministry of Planning, Agriculture and Industry, also 
the cassava processors were invited. So they participated into this uh, one day workshop, workshop, workshop that took place at the IITA office in uh, Kinshasa. This one, you can find that in uh, some news, some newspapers, you know, you have some of those uh, information down there. So you can get it from the, from the, those newspapers. There are about three newspapers and the radio, well-known radio across the country, Top Congo disseminated the information and the outcome of this uh, one day workshop. Also, uh, the people on, who own the flat drives are encouraging people to come, are encouraging the processors to come to the, to the plants to visit, to see how it's working so that they can try to, to adopt uh, the technology. And then we are making also a lot of contacts with uh, cassava processors. We are talking to them, we are pushing them, uh, helping them to get in contact with the fabricators. And then we're getting also support from the Fazer team in the manufacturing of uh, new flash dryers. I, what I can say from, 2000, from 2020 up to now, most of all the flash dryer manufactured in DRC are, with the are, are done in collaboration with the flash dryer team. So the specifications are coming from the flash dryer team Oof. Okay. And then also in that in order to to, to push up this technology, a, a team of uh, equipment fabricator, a cassava processor, traveled to, to Colombia in 2019 and participated in a workshop in order to know how to use the to use correctly an efficient flash dryer. How what are the characteristics that an efficient flash dryer should, should have? And then with the dissemination of those informations, we are getting to some people ordering for flash dryer. So some new flash dryers are being manufactured. For let, let's say for now, the, the main equipment fabricators have about uh, four demands, four entrepreneurs have paid all, all, almost what, what is needed so that they can get by the end of the year, uh, their flash drain from, the, from them. The demand are there, but the main problem is that the entrepreneurs are to have to pay from their pockets. That's why so many, many of them are interested, but few, few have ordered, and also they are paying by settlements. It's taking time of them. Some of them, it's just been almost for two years since they started to pay. They never finished to pay the money. So the the the, the flat that is lying at the the manufacturer place. Yes, I think that's what I can report on the progress made in, a, in the dissemination of uh, drying technology in DRC. And also, uh, I would thank, uh, I would thank the, the project team, the USAID, FDB, the World Bank, for the support to the work that being on, on cassava, particularly on drying. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Simon. Uh, yeah, I think that the, there is high demand in, uh, in Congo for, for cassava flour, uh, in particular for better quality cassava flour uh, with, with less contaminations due to sun drying. Uh, we, we have time for one uh, one or two questions, uh, if uh, if any, you you can raise your hand or type in the in the chat box. 
Alejandro has to rehearse a deputy back for the presentation to the panel. Just go up. I think it's uh, just go up. You need to be agile. Is that okay? Yes. Thank you. We, we have a question uh, about uh, fuel consumption. Uh, how, how many liters were the old flash dryers consuming per, per ton in, in Congo? And how about the, the new, the re redesigned uh, flash dryer or the, or the new, new flash dryer? How, how many liters of fuel do they consume per ton? Simon, do, do you have uh, some figures? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm I missed I miss, I miss the question, please. Okay, uh, the, the question is uh, a comparison between uh, the fuel consumption uh, of the old flash dryers and uh, the fuel consumption after uh, renovation or for, for the new flash dryers. Uh, what, how, how many liters uh, was it? Uh, Milliliters of, uh, of diesel uh, before and after oh. of the intervention. Okay. Uh, like in the case of Layuka, it they used to be to use about, uh, I think, uh, around 70, 70 liters for, for, to, for, to dry the product. Then they went down around. Uh, Around 50, 40 something. I do not have that now the figures, but I can look on that. But the drop was about almost 30%. Okay, that's, that's good. Thank you. Yeah, and the, the, the main reason, as I, as I remember, was from the uh, improving the heat exchanger in, in this case. Of course, yes. The, the modified the heat exchanger lines, also the, 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 the the airflow. Okay, we, we have a comment uh, and a good transition. So if, if the project team in Congo uh, are supporting the fabricators, as explained, uh, we will be happy uh, if the team in Nigeria can also support the, the fabricators in Nigeria. So uh, I think this is a good transition to, to present, to, to move to the next presentation by uh, Dr. Adebute on the, on the recent work uh, in Nigeria, uh, in particular at Firo. Uh, Alejandro, can, can you show the, the recording? Yeah, Due to connection problems, uh, this presentation has been pre recorded. Good day, everyone. I'm engineer SA, a deputy, a principal research officer working at Federal Institute of Industrial Research, which is Lagos, Firo. I'm the scaling champion on the project in Nigeria, and I'm presenting on progress in scaling up flash drive technology in Nigeria. Introduction. Cassava has greatly been transformed into a high-yielding cash crop, a foreign exchange anna, as well as crop for food security and industrializations. Drying, which is an essential unit operations involved in the production of cassava starch and high-quality cassava flour, has been found to be the most energy demanding within the process. Hence, its control is very crucial in order to ensure that the product produced is of high quality. The figures on the slide shows that drying consumes about 70 to 80 percent of energy use for production of cassava starch or flour, according to Trans Auto 2015. This further confirms the outcome of the SME audit exercise of cassava processing centers across Nigeria in 2012, 
by teams of uh, engineers and social economists, which was considered by Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Natural Resources. In their submission, they stated that two major factors account for the high cost of production of a cassava product, and those factors were the cost of raw material and cost of drying. Nigerian context in summary, diversification of cassava product processing and utilization are personally constrained in spite of Nigerian rating as the world's largest producer of cassava, contributing of inadequate and inefficient processing machinery and equipment. This has limited the industrial use of cassava. Although there are decades of experience in the processing of cassava, especially for Gary, and in 2002, the Presidential Initiative on Cassava directed the inclusion of 10% Unfermented cassava flour with wheat flour as a composite flour for the production of confectionery product. This policy created huge market for HKCF and stimulated initiative for HKCF product, uh, production. Flash dryer being the most suitable dry system for such product as HKCF, was, it was widely adopted, and as a result, local equipment manufacturer were able to develop different design model of uh, flour, uh, flash dryer. Thereafter, there was strong competition, strong conflict with wheat miller and the importance of wheat in Nigeria, being that Nigeria was known to be the leading country in Africa in the importation of uh, wheat, considering the population of the country. However, with this current state of the economy and Nigeria being an oil dependent nation, the price of the oil has crashed at the global market. So, government is trying to divert attention or focus all those areas that can enhance the revival of the economy and a cultural value chain has been the foremost in this regard. The table on the slide shows the potential market demand for HPCF if the policy on cassava is fully implemented with different level of uh, inclusion across various industries. These are various design models of flash dryer developed by local equipment manufacturer, ranging from single to multiple cyclone system. The map on the slide is showing the distribution of a cassava processing center with flash dryer installation across Nigeria. Issues and challenges, which are generally with small scale flash dryer. The table on the slide shows the comparison of the performance of that case dryer with small scale dryer. The table will be that the small scale dryer are inefficient because they tend to use more energy and the cost of production is high when compared to the large scale uh, dryer. According to Trans the 2015. So this shows that uh, there is need for innovative cassava processing technology in order to address some of these challenges. Comparison in the data performance across some cassava producing countries are shown on the slide. The small capacity dryer in Vietnam and Nigeria tend to use more energy when compared to large dry scale in Thailand. And in addition, the cost of production in this small capacity flash dryer are higher when compared to the large dry scale. This further confirmed that the small scale flash dryer are inefficient. Furthermore, the operating condition of existing locally fabricated flash dryer as of Optima, which results in high energy use. And we have also been able to observe that the drying process in some of the existing locally fabricated flash dryer are not fully optimized as a result of shorter length of the drying tool. And the minimum drying to require for the drying to be fully optimized is 20 meter length. Hence, this results into poor efficiency of the technologies. Adoption of innovative technologies 
would lead to promotion of timely large scale processing of cassava root, reductions in cost of production, promotes an addition of cassava product, and encourage international trade opportunity. As stated earlier, Nigeria is known to be the world largest producer of cassava, but at international market, Nigeria is not there because bulk of the productions are being consumed locally and Nigeria will not be a key player in terms of cassava value chain if we remain at that level. Hence, there is need for adoption of innovative technology. RTB flash drive project intervention started in 2019. Uh, some equipment manufacturers and cassava processor were selected to receive training on the new innovation technology being scaled up. And these equipment manufacturers were selected based on their experience in the fabrication of a flash dryer. Why the cassava processor was selected based on the frequency of production of HQCF in their factories. The equipment manufacturer and cassava processor selected were listed on this slide. And these selected participants were intended to be pilot or vanguard for scaling up of the technology. The project team were in Nigeria in 2019 before the training at Siat in Kadi on Falamarajan tour to some of the selected partners on the project. And those centers visited were ICMA Venture Limited, the Benefit Agroalite Services and Open Door International System as shown on the slide. On capacity building, the participants across the participating country gathered at SIHA to receive hands-on training on energy efficient flash drying technology. And some of those training that were exposed, they were exposed to as listed on the slide. And the prototype flash dryer installed as shared was also demonstrated for the participant. The project team came back to Nigeria after the training in Colombia to assess some of the existing model of flash dryer. Two person center were visited as listed on the slide and two different model of flash dryer which were single and six cyclone system were evaluated at those processing center with the report and recommendations prepared and made available to the owners of the factories. Stakeholder forum was organized on the technology innovation being scaled up, which was held at Firo Lagos. The participants at the forum, which are stakeholder in Kazawa value chain, comprised of equipment manufacturer, cassava processor, expert on quality control, and financial institutions such as First Bank, Bank of Agriculture, and NISA, a number of Central Bank of Nigeria, which is saddled with the responsibility of agricultural lending. The project sponsored development of energy efficient flash dryer based on the technology innovations at SEAT, and this was achieved by the project partner who received training in Colombia with the supervision of the project team, and the dryer is installed at Firo, Lagos. This is the heat exchanger as installed at Firo. The heat exchanger is a, entirely a new concept. It is very, very compact and highly efficient. This is some of the components of the flash dryer. It is a single cyclone system and also a negative type of flash dryer system. And this is the control panel with screen as shown on the slide. Human machine interface. This is the screen on the control panel. It is a fully automated system. The drying condition could be configured based on the product to be dry by setting all the drying parameter via the screen and also it has provision for wireless which can make the dryer to be operated 
via our Android phone or laptop within 10 meter radius of the dryer. And with provisions of internet, the dryer could be operated from anywhere in the world. The testing of the dryer installed at Firo was carried out, and the sample of the dry product obtained from the dryer, as shown on the slide, the color was well maintained, and the moisture content of the dried sample was found to be suitable for storage and fall within Nigerian standard. The table on the slide shows the specifications of the flash dryer installed at Firo. The length of the drying tube is 22.5 meter, which satisfies the minimum requirement length for dryer at small scale. And the initial moisture content of the wet cake was 47.06%, which reduces to 9.6%. And the specific energy consumption of the dryer was determined to be to be 2.91 megajoule per kg, while the energy efficiency was found to be 82.5%. This is an improvement uh, for a dryer at small scale, even though this is the result of a preliminary testing. Because the dryer is still being tested, it is yet to be fully characterized. And since the dryer is a fully automated dryer, which permits flexibility in drying conditions. So we are hoping that by the time the dryer is fully characterized, that the performance is even likely to even improve. These are the list of achievements by project partners in Nigeria. After the training received in Colombia, the team was able to resuscitate flash dryer at Oyo Feluto factory. Ever since the installation of that dryer, it has never been put into use. The intervention from the team, the flash dryer was resuscitated. Also, assessment of the flash dryer at Igubaba and Ingusi Factory Limited in Oshun Oshubo Oshun State and Isenyi Oyo State was carried out with the report and recommendation made available to the owner of the factory. Moreover, 2.5 ton flash dryer was acquired by Gobridge Food Limited in Lagos and the flash dryer was built by Ikman Venture Limited, one of the beneficiaries of the training on the innovations. In addition, heat exchanger was also acquired by Lexus Food Limited, built by Divine Faith Agro Ally Services. Although work is still ongoing on the heat exchanger, both Lexus Food and Divine Faith are part of the participant at the WUSIC training in Colombia. And lastly, 2.5 ton capacity flash dryer was built by the project partner in conjunction with the project team which was installed at Firo, Lagos, Nigeria. This slide is showing one of the training sessions at Sihat. This slide is showing another session during the training. Participants were being exposed to practical fabrication technique of flash dry components. Participants from Nigeria that attended the training. The project team with the acting director general when they visited Firo. The team during one of the project meeting. Project partner asked if I don't factory with the owner Mrs. Alade. This is the flash dryer built based on the innovations by Ikman Venture Limited at Gobridge Food, Lagos. On behalf of the partners in Nigeria, we want to express our profound gratitude to IIT, Siat, Sirat, Firo, Dr. Abbas, Dr. Thierry, project partners and others on the opportunity given to us based on the exposure on the innovations technology being scaled up. We really appreciate it and we say thank you. 
to the audience. Thanks for listening. Thank you very much, Shadik Bite, for the very informative presentation. And it's well done, well done uh, with the progress uh, for developing and then constructing and testing the using a flash dryer at, uh, at Firo. Uh, we, we are nearly at the end of the workshop. Uh, nevertheless, we, we have time maybe for, to, to take two or three questions from, uh, from the audience. Any questions you can uh, you can write uh, in the chat or raise your hand. I see a participant uh, HP uh, with a raised hand. Do, do you have a question? Maybe not. No, uh, I, ha I have a, a question a bit uh, about the plans for this dryer. Uh, so it is uh, completed and uh, under final testing. Uh, in the future, the, does FIRO plan to organize some uh, workshops or the demonstration uh, for interested parties, such as the processor, the equipment manufacturer? Uh, so thank you, uh, everyone. Uh, actually, uh, one of the reasons why the uh, our team leader, Dr. Abbas, decided to uh, install the fire at uh, the guy at Firo is that the Firo we, we used to organize a training uh, for potential investors or SMEs. Even just last week, uh, some of them even approached me. They approached us that they wanted to use the dryer to demonstrate to the participant at the training. And Dr. Asuru gave them go ahead, even though at the event, eventually it did not make it okay. So we, we are hoping that. Uh, and several of these training, uh, we need to organize in Kiro uh, occasionally. So I think it is open. Even Dr. Azimu suggested that uh, whoever among those processors that have product to dry, that they can come and use uh, the dryer. So while they are using it, so we are also trying to characterize uh, the dryer for that. And our people in the baking section of Kiro, did that uh, test we carried out. They came to collect the product from us and they have used it to bake. They were, they were even telling me that they want to give us money. They want to pay us on that product. So I think I'm still expecting them on that. So thank you. Excellent. Yeah, so there, there is potential for further activities. Yeah. As, uh, as we mentioned, uh, the after big project is, uh, is coming to, to an end. So we're, we're looking for, for ways and opportunities to, for, for the flash dryer system to continue to expand uh, either uh, with this team or with other teams. And Firo seems to be very well positioned now to, to take on the, the lead. Uh, we have a question. Can, can we? Uh, have a picture or see a picture of the of the flash dryer in uh, in Firo. Uh, yeah, uh, we, we could do this quickly. I, I think we have some in the presentation. Actually, uh, the the picture is available. But because of the time limit for the presentation, that was why we were able to put uh, so many pictures on this slide. But uh, the pictures are available. And if you permit me to share, I can even share some of the data that was downloaded during the uh, drying process, which captures all the drying parameters as uh, during the, uh, the drying process. So, uh, OK. Yeah. Do you want to share your screen, uh, Adegite? Okay. 
So go ahead, go ahead with the, the sharing of the the, the data. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I'm I'm a bit confused. Uh, my my idea is to just just show the the picture or some photos of the of the flash area at, at zero. I think you have a slide in the in your presentation that gives a good uh, good illustration. Or if, if you want, I can uh, I can uh, do this. So those, this is a, a snapshot of the of two two parts of the flash dryer at, at zero. Uh, to the right, we we have the the improved uh, heat exchanger, and to the left, we have the beginning of the of the drying tube, and also the the feeding system uh, in the center. And to the left, the the, the control panel with the the PID and the various uh, control. Uh, for the different motors and different parts of the of the dryer. Okay. Uh, I think we are reaching the the end of the of the workshop. Uh, uh, Thierry, I, I think Kelly had a question. Who? Kelly, Kelly is raising hand. Oh yes, Kelly. Yes, uh, yes, yeah. Thierry. Uh, first of all, I, I think uh, this is a, a great work from the entire team there, uh, uh, Thierry, uh, Alejandro, Doctor Bass, uh, and everybody, Doctor Bola. I think this is more of a comment. Uh, certainly, the demand for uh, such equipment is, is really high uh, because one of the biggest challenges that we, we are dealing with is to produce uh, a, a, a product of the right quality. So that that is very, very important. And looking at what you have achieved so far and what else needs to be done looking at the countries i mean where such can be piloted we see uh, a lot more that uh, we need to work together to to see how to take this work forward uh, for instance you know uh, uh, it would be good to to find ways of uh, seeking uh, funding to bring more countries on board and to test uh, this sort of equipment. I, I personally believe uh, there is really uh, room to, uh, to, 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 to make them uh, to, to, to make them viable. They, they are viable. And if you cut the, the productivity in cassava, it is increasing. So we, we, there, is, there, is, there is really need to get that data and then and then and then see how the whole picture works out there is also uh, a value added if we could look at the product that is coming out of the flash dryer and get it tested compare with uh, the product that is you know uh, on the local market that alone is a great incentive for people to invest in this equipment uh, the other thing is of course somebody mentioned about the issue of uh, 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 the cost of stainless steel and some other things, which uh, which could be handled at a higher level to increase the the competitiveness of using the fresh dry dryers by having these governments and other stakeholders look at the fiscal policy, how they can you know uh, uh, provide incentives. So all all of these I think are, 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 are really need to be worked on. Uh, this has been mentioned. I wanted to say we need also to go forward to look at in these countries where the, the flash dryers are to look at the process visually. You know, right now we've had these presentations, but it's also good to look at, you know, the, the visual 
you know, uh, presentation of how the flash dryer works. You know, uh, we've, we've heard about the presses, which also determine probably the output. So all of these are, are interesting. We just hope that, I, I don't know, the team really puts in uh, the usual effort they usually do to, to, to get more funding, but attract more funding. One area probably we could look at also is getting the banks involved to try and uh, provide this equipment on lease basis. Uh, many of the banks that want to fund agriculture don't know about this equipment. They can put them into their programs as uh, uh, equipment that they can provide, you know, uh, or, 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 on, on lease basis or, you know, alone, uh, like they do with other equipment like tractors. So I think that's a whole uh, new stakeholder that we need to bring on board if we are going to have the scaling to, 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 to take place. Thank you very much. Otherwise, great thanks to the team. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Kelly, for your comments. Thank you. Uh, so uh, I, will, uh, I will now uh, close the, the workshop. Uh, perhaps uh, may, may I invite um, any final comments from uh, Dr. Abbas, uh, possibly uh, Arnaud? Um, okay, Thierry, is it possible for you to share your screen, the last slide of my presentation yesterday that I did not present because yes. we, I wanted to reserve it for today? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Yes. Okay. So, um, ladies and gentlemen, um, as we presented yesterday, uh, myself, Dr. Tran, Dr. Ashu, the journey of flash dryer development started a long time ago. And the least we can do is to appreciate the work of those who came before us did, which we built on. So, to end the address I started yesterday, I would like to show tributes to uh, RTV scientists and partners who recognized the importance of small scale flash dryers for Africa and supported a series of work uh, done to improve our understanding of the design parameters for achieving optimum efficiency. Um, we'd like to recognize Dr. Mpoko Bokanga who was uh, leading the cassava bread project some years back, during which we identified the use of flash dryer as a way forward uh, to expand cassava processing, especially for this cassava flour. Dr. Alfred Dixon, as I presented yesterday, provided significant support to equipment manufacturers in Nigeria to expand their capacity and ability to produce flash dryers. And again, um, it's important to uh, appreciate the director of RTB, uh, Dr. Graham Thierry, who gave this particular team the opportunity to uh, first, in the first project, to develop the knowledge. And then in the second project, to scale. And this workshop is part of that uh, scaling and making this knowledge available to everyone. And finally, uh, Dr. Muller, uh, Professor Muller, who at the time that we started this project, uh, gave us confidence that um, there are tools that could be used in developing this knowledge. And he provided, actually donated uh, tools to, to us at IITA, which enabled us to do the assessment of flash dryers in Nigeria and, and Tanzania, and he provided uh, backstopping uh, for us. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would kindly uh, invite you to uh, let us give a round of applause uh, to these great scientists who came before us. Uh, with this, I, I thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Abbas. And finally, I, it, it's important also to, to give recognition and acknowledgement to, to everyone who has participated, to, to the panelists, to the presenters. Uh, thank you very much for your 
excellent uh, contributions uh, to the to the support teams, uh, Siad, uh, ITA, and Sirad. Uh, I, to Diego Naziri as well, who, who joined us yesterday and uh, helped to moderate the, the roundtable. Uh, I uh, also want to uh, to give the appreciation to our translator, uh, Frederica Anyan Bossu, uh, who has been uh, providing the, the French translation uh, live. Uh, she uh, she works uh, at the African Language Institute, uh, which is based in Abomey Calavi, Calavi uh, near Cotonou in uh, in Benin. So maybe also a round of, of applause to, to all the, the supporting uh, people who have made this uh, this workshop possible. Thank you. And finally, uh, a huge thank you to all the participants and attendees who, who have taken up their time to, to follow the, the discussion since yesterday. And thank you for all the very relevant uh, questions, that all the very interesting discussions that we have had. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Surajo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Bola. Cheers. Thank you. Let's okay. let's the floor Hope to see you soon in Nigeria. <laughs> We stopped recording, right, Thierry? Yeah, I think so.